Hello, it's Sarah. I'm going to do a quick, hopefully quick, wood burning tutorial for you guys. I created this little pattern, so I just drew it on paper. I'm just going to grab it. It was actually scrap paper that had been sitting on my desk, but it's a nice big size. I traced out this, I think it's a 10 inch, yeah, 10 inch round um, piece of uh, basswood. And then I just sketched out this little moon pattern and traced it on. So I used graphite paper in my tracing. And it's kind of dark because I used a nice new piece. So I'm um, going to go ahead and get started. I have the Colwood 2, Super Pro 2. That is the wood burning tool that I use. Um, it has a heavy duty setting and a detail setting. Here's the on off switch. I have also got, and I'm going to get it because sometimes I don't burn with it because I get lazy, but this is a um, Haka FA 400, whatever, smoke absorber that I use for my stained glass, but it definitely sucks the smoke away from me, which, because you're not supposed to inhale this stuff, I have my bird on my shoulder, Kiwi, so I don't want her to, um, it's just kind of loud. It's not that loud. It's like white noise. And I think I'm going to turn on my burner. I'm going to use this tip, which I feel like it's more for um, shading. But I like it because it has that rounded edges. And I can make nice, deep, dark lines with it. Um, this machine only takes a few seconds to heat up. It's on a four and a half. And I'm just going to start by, let's do these stars because they're going to come in a little bit. And you know me, I tend to come out of the shot. So I'm going to try and uh, see how the smoke went right that way. I just turn the piece so that I can have the most comfortable uh, way to hold this. I'm connected to a cord and it's not exactly like a pen. It feels like a pen in my hand, but the way the blade goes across the wood. Now, there was a bumblebee um, traced onto here with something I really wasn't able to get off so I just put a star there I don't know what I traced it on with but I sanded over this and I erased and he just really wanted he wants to be on there so hopefully I'm in, staying in the shot um, I have really gotten addicted to this the technique that I've been doing where I would burn the outline and then um, paint. So that is my plan for this. I have um, wood burned the background of things as well, but I'm going to paint this. I'm going to use probably some nice deep midnight blue for the background well for the area where the stars are um, probably some nice ooh I went out of lines there hopefully I'll be able to erase it but the paint will cover it I'm going to come back this way and try to I just made it darker and I kind of went over it The slower I move, the more control I have. Um, there are other tips that you can use to get curvy lines. I have, I just got a real little ball tip that I like, that I've been using um, to write my name and stuff like that. I'm going to turn it this way. 
I like to pull toward me. That's just how I feel the most comfortable. And because there is no fix in this. If I mess it up, that's it. I got to start over or I did just get a book. Um, and if I'm honest, I have not read it. And I looked through it and I kind of perused it, but I did not uh, really take in the information as I should have by Manisa. Um, there were some patterns in there as well that I wanted to try. Uh, she also uses colored pencils. I couldn't see that line. Colored pencils in her work. She does a lot more realistic work. Realism, I mean, you know. Um, but that is something I want to look into. I have colored pencils, so I would want to use them, you know, but for right now, I'm sticking with acrylic paint. I don't know that I like, yeah, I'm going to have to do it, because if I don't, you'll see the line, because this tracing paper, this graphite, I got it at Hobby Lobby, but it is very dark. So look how pretty. I'm going to do his eyeball. So I'm going to go this way. See if I go slow, it burns really deep and dark. And I'm going to kind of flick that up because I want to make a couple of different eyelashes. Maybe three. And, um, but yeah, so that overburn isn't really um, something that a real wood burner would like. They don't like to have overburn. I do. Um, it's just uh, one of the things about this that is my, uh, wait, what am I trying to say? It's my style, right? So it's my preference and I, right now anyway. And all I would do to get rid of that is turn my burner down. Um, I just really love the dark line that, the, that I get when I have it. This is at a four and a half. So I could definitely do this um, on a lower number and I would get a fine, I would probably just have to move a little slower and I'm impatient. So um, I burn hotter. And I get that one and done feeling that I really like. I even like it when I'm painting. I, I'm a heavy hand because you can go back and float and float and float as many times as you want with as many colors as you want. And uh, to get the desired depth of color and all that stuff. And um, I've done that. I have. I mean lots of the pattern packets that I've painted uh, I kinda realize that I just don't need to do it. I, I am perfectly happy without having it like that. That one got a little wonky on me but so far so good you guys. This is coming out really nice. Um, I mentioned in the previous video that we got a Glowforge and it's very similar to uh, a Silhouette or a, a Cricut Explorer but you would use wood, plastic, leather, 
um, it's a laser cutter. So um, there's a seminar today. Uh, I'm sorry, a webinar. And uh, we're going to watch that. I think it's giving you tips of how to create your own business. And I do have my Serenity Crafts Etsy store, which I do not put, I have to put some of my mandalas in there because I'm just getting such a huge collection. And um, I just, I'm not a business person per se. I don't like that stuff. I mean, so what, right? Nobody, you don't, not everyone loves their job, but I don't want to make my, what I, my serenity crafts into something that becomes work because work meaning I have to do it. Um, you know, I like to feel inspired when I come in the craft room. I don't want to have to come in the craft room because I have to, you know, so we'll see what happens with it. Um, Joe's retiring. Well, not yet. A couple more years, but we're just starting to think about this stuff. He loves this stuff, like programming. He's a programmer, so it's fun to him. Um, he, we have a Christmas display that you would not believe. Uh, we have the lights that blink to music and all that. Oh, I went out of the lines. That's my first out of the lines, really. Anywho, um, he programs all that stuff, you know? And so it's fun for him. But I really don't want to get away from this, the hands-on, do-it-myself stuff, because it really makes me happy and proud and we'll see. Even, um, I'm starting to think about pattern packets, creating my own designs and making pattern packets so that other people can paint it. It's, it sounds like work to me. Now, now I'm going to turn off my burner, come up, and I want to think about, do I want another star right here? You know what I'm thinking I could do is just some of these guys, something like, uh, you know what I'll do, I'll take the tracing paper and I'll see what it looks like on the tracing paper first. So, um, I would just take my pencil and maybe do something like this. Looks like more like a snowflake to me though. But they can look like little starbursts as well. I like them. I like them. Um, and then I could put a dot in the middle. I think I do want to do that. So I'm going to just turn my burner back on. And I'm going to turn this back on. I'm going to put one right here. Kind of has that more of a Bethlehem star look to it. I'm going to put one right here. See, I didn't trace it on, so it's getting a little wonky. And then right here. And I think they're kind of needing one here, maybe a small one. See, 
See, I can go crazy. That's the thing. I gotta be able to stop myself. And then I'm going to take another, I'm going to flip this to the detail side for a second, and I'm going to take my dotting tool. I'm going to put it on here, and then I'm going to flip it back, and I'm just going to make a few just dots. And turn it up a little. I'm putting it on a six. I think that's it. I don't want to get too crazy. And I could put dots in the middle of that, but I think this is this is plenty. Turn it off, Sarah. So that's it. I have to decide if I'm going to I think I'm just going to float I have to go out and spray this. I'm going to use just a matte spray varnish. I go outside. Oh, let me sign my name. So now I'm going to switch to this little teeny ball tip. And I also use this one. I'm going to use this one. This is like, I don't know, it's just a, like a, a wire. And I'm going to clean it a little bit. I just rub it on here and kind of get the carbon off. I'm going to turn it on. I don't think I need it on a 6. I'll go to like a 5. Let me see where my little face is. I'm going to go right here. And I just do it just like cursive writing. I like this tip because it's strong and I can push. Well, that was wonky. Sometimes the um, tooth of the wood pulls me in a different direction. I wasn't paying attention. bad for not having lines. I took it up a little harder because that way I can have a really soft touch and it really still gets dark. And then I'm going to go the dreaded 2020. The year of chaos. And Okay, good enough. Turn that off. Lovely. Then I'll take it outside and I'll spray them. And I'll come back and I'll do a painting video, okay? It'll be quick. Alright, you guys. Thanks for watching.